Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out a tool I've been meaning to check out for a very long time, and after my first initial impression for it, I should have checked this out a long time ago. It is called Codium, and it is a completely free, for individuals, AI coding assistant. Basically, think of GitHub Copilot, just free, and uh, you've pretty much got the idea behind Codium, but before we continue this video much longer, I have some housework uh, I have to take care of, so let me just go in here, uh, scroll on down here, find my code pilot subscription and uh yeah let's get rid of this uh because i literally have no need for it anymore and legit i was paying for github copilot and this has uh replaced it and i gotta say something before i continue on though i was going to replace github copilot anyways because it just wasn't that special but uh, having a free version uh, definitely uh, appeals to me. And the nice thing about this guy here, so it does the major things, auto-completion, chat, and context-aware things like refactoring, code explanations, and that kind of thing. And the thing that people are going to really like with this guy is it actually has uh, tooling for just about every IDE you can think of. So every editor under the sun uh, and a lot of the languages out there as well. And as you're going to see impressively from this one, uh, game-specific things are in here, including uh, GDevelop. So uh, if you use an IDE, chances are there is a plugin for it out there. So you got Vim, NeoVim, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, JetBrains suite of tools, and so on. So this is an excellent little tool in that regard. Uh, in terms of free, yeah, it is actually free for individuals forever. Uh, for teams, there is a $12 per seat per month. So if you are uh, in an enterprise, Enterprise and you need it, uh, that is there and that is a price. Uh, I suppose if you're actually an enterprise, there is another level there as well. So we'll come back to some of the FAQ after the fact, but first I want to do a bit of a demonstration of how this guy works. So here we are, and we're going to open up uh, in Visual Studio Code. I've already installed it and I already logged into it. So this is uh, the Godot samples project, uh, and I already have it loaded as a plugin. So you'll come in over here, you'll see you add Codium as an extension like so, and what can we do with it? Well, we can do quite a bit with it actually. What I could do is I could come in here. And one of the things I found uh, that I didn't like about Copilot is first off, the UI got in my way. I really hated the way it did code completions. And second, it was like having a pairs programmer if your pair was a bit of an idiot. So he sometimes wrote useful code, but most of the time, whew, it was interesting. So what I could do here, I could grab this guy. And you'll see here, I got a pair of options down here. So I could refactor or explain. I say, what does this code do? And this code, uh, this snippet creates a number of bullet objects in a game. Uh, it sets up the initial properties uh, such as shape, speed, position, physics property, and then adds them to a list called bullets. Pretty accurate description. And then this is a conversation. So then I could do something like, how can I make this faster. Now you may notice we are working with the GDScript language here. So yes, there is GDScript support, which is pretty cool. And then we have some optimization tips here, which again is pretty cool. So you have your typical chat stuff here, by the way, there is history. So if you want to go back uh, and explain something, you can, if you want to get rid of it, you can delete it from there as well. Uh, so you've got this chat based interface, which is quite nice. And we can do other things. So come back here and let's go ahead and instead refactor this code. So you can see here, I could comment it, logging statements, clean it up, check for uh, nulls, make sure that it's strongly typed, verbosely comment it. Uh, so you can see here, it's going to do a recommended version with even more commenting and explanation going on. And if you like what it's doing, you just click here and now you have your obnoxiously over commented code option here. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. I, I have to say the way that this works, I, I just find I like it better than Copilot and I'm not spending $10 a month on it. So uh, that part is definitely pretty nice. Another thing you can do is anytime you want, just, just like you would do with Copilot, you can do a comment and say what you want to do. So basically, uh, each draw, call, um, draw a red rectangle on screen, like so. Uh, and then uh, I could go ahead and enter it, and it will give me a suggestion. If I like it, I hit tab, and then boom, it will go ahead and draw it. Now, I don't know why it's calling them bullet images. Uh, it's, it's not, again, perfect. A lot of times, this is like having a pairs programmer, where the pair programmer is, again, a bit of an idiot. Now let's get rid of this code over here. And another option you have is at any time, uh, so you can do it with this, the comment form of things, but I can also do control I and it will start an inline uh, comment like this. So let's say uh, create a class named Bob that has uh, an integer HP value and a string name. See how it does with that. Uh, you'll notice if I scroll on down here, there is a submit. 
and it will go ahead and create the code for you. And you see it, it did exactly what you want. And then you have the option here. You can use your mouse, you can select it or you can reject it. Uh, so let's say, okay, I'm, I'm good with how you created Bob and go ahead and say, yep, I'm good with that. Now I gotta say, I actually like the interface, the code completion, the process, the keyboard stuff much more than I do with Copilot. I found Copilot was, uh, the IntelliSense suggestions were always just kind of tripping me up and getting in my way. I haven't done a lot of uh, code editing with this guy so far. Uh, there's a lot more functionality than I am actually using here, uh, but it does give you an idea of the capabilities of it. So let's just go ahead, I'll hit F1, and then you'll notice if I hit Codium, uh, here you get an idea of the kind of things that do. So I could do things, explain a problem, explain a code block. Uh, I can focus on the chat view over here. We can open up the chat, open up profile. Uh, there is a search as well. I haven't totally figured out how search is going to work. It's supposed to use like AI to search through your project, I think. So you see here, it's going through and finding all of the things where bullet is is used or declared or so i think it's basically a chat based search engine option i haven't used it too too much uh, but it is an option that is available there uh, on the whole uh, basically it does everything for me that copilot did and i didn't use copilot a lot uh, but this is doing what copilot did it's not costing me ten dollars a month and i like the user interface better so that's all seeming pretty win-win-win to me, to be honest. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a hands-on portion uh, with Codium. I would highly recommend checking this guy out simply because of the fact, well, it's free. You've got nothing to lose, and it works with just about every IDE you can imagine. So here we are back at the FAQ because there's some really important questions when it comes to these AI tools, specifically, how are they actually training it, and uh, why is it free? So how is it being monetized? They're monetizing off of their corporate level, but you're wondering, okay, well, is it training off of my code? Is there analytics side of things? Is there, is it looking at stuff? And there is actually a bit of an answer there, and we're going to go and check that out. So first off, uh, IDEs, uh, you got pretty much everything you can imagine is actually supported. But we come on down here. And what you are probably most interested in is the stuff for privacy and ethics. Will it regurgitate private code? No private code. Underlying model was trained on publicly available natural language and source code data, including code in public repositories. Don't worry, we'll get back to that one in just a second because this is one of those things that Copilot did is they like crawled a bunch of open source code, like GPL code, uh, which was illegal. Uh, so it will never train its generative model on private or user's code. So it's not training off of your code, something to be aware of. Uh, similar to other such model, the vast majority of suggested code has never been seen before. As suggestions largely lacks the style and naming convention in your code. Research has shown that in cases where there may be an exact match are often uh, when there are near universal implementations or where there is not enough context to derive these stylistic effects from. Um, Again, it can generate uh, bad things. Uh, it's just the nature of these language models. Uh, this one's important here. So what does it actually collect? Is there um, analytics going on or telemetry? And for individuals, in order to continuously improve, Codium does collect telemetry data such as latency, engagement with features, and suggestions accepted and rejected. Uh, this data is only used for directly improving the functionality, usability, and quality of Codium, detecting abuse of the system, and evaluating Codium's impact. Your data is not shared with, sold to, or used by any other party, company, or product, and we protect your data by encrypting data in transit. This data is primarily used for inspected in aggregate and can only be directly accessed in extreme cases by authorized members of the Codium team, your code will never be used to train a generative model. We want Codium to be a product you can trust, and so any data collected will only be used to further increase Codium's value to you. Codium also does provide users with the option to opt out from allowing Codium to store and therefore use their code snippet data post-inference, uh, which can be found on your profile page. It's one of those things to be aware of. By the way, if you pay, no data beyond the number of seats for billing purposes is collected at all. It uh, seems like a fair, reasonable trade-off for me. Of course, you want to read their privacy policy, terms of service, and so on. Uh, but definitely one of those areas you want to go with. And then the other thing, and this is one of those things that ChatGPT got, uh, sorry, um, yeah, I guess ChatGPT as well, uh, but Copilot definitely got in problems with this as they were training on non-permissive licenses. They do not train on repositories, repositories with non-permissive license, example, GPL. Greatly respect open source and the work done by these communities uh, have undoubtedly been instrumental to making software industry what it is today. We do not want to expose our users such as enterprise customers to potential legal risk. This is uh, in clear difference from products such as GitHub Copilot. And there's a blog post explaining more. So that's the that's the gist of it, by the way. Completely free tool. Uh, again, auto completion tools available there for a wide variety of programming languages, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then of course we have the uh, chat functionality 
uh, kind of explained. Uh, so you got translation tools, refactoring, explanations, and gener code generation tools in there. And then we have the context aware stuff there. So if you want to do like unit tests or um, uh, uh, other things, of course, they got their uh, search stuff in there as well. And it's aware of your code base. So it can understand across the various different files and so on. And yeah, that is it, Codium, a tool I meant to check out for ages. And again, I wish I checked this one out about five or six months ago because uh, I would have saved myself like 50, 60 bucks. Because uh, to me, I like this as much or more than Copilot and it's um, it's free. And so that's, that's pretty cool. Now, always do keep in mind though, when it's free, that generally means you are the product. But I, I don't really see where they're getting much from you other than the analytics data there, uh, some of which you can actually opt out for. But just do be aware, anytime something is free, there is a catch but the catch doesn't seem that bad to me. If you can think of something that's bad about this one, let me know in the comments down below. Have you tried out uh, Codium and what did you think? Are you currently paying for Copilot? And are you happy with it? Because if you aren't, if you are, if you are and you aren't happy, I would highly recommend out checking out Codium. Uh, for my use cases, this completely replaces it. I wasn't faking it earlier. I literally just uh, actually unsubscribed to Copilot during this video. Let me know what you think, comments down below. I'll talk to you all later, goodbye.